What's going on, everybody? What's happening? Ron Carter here. I'm super pumped for this live today. Uh, <clears throat> we're interviewing Jay Chang to Langsy. And um, actually, we're uh, still <clears throat> trying to get him into the uh, into the Be Live room. Ah, he just joined. Awesome, awesome. So Jay's here. Uh, just so you know, Jay, Jay's kind of like backstage right now, so to speak. So I know you guys can't see him, but I see that he's here. He's on. He's uh, adjusting his camera and, and getting ready for you guys. Um, but yes, yes, I'm pulling up the uh, the feed on my Facebook right now so I can see your guys' comments. And uh, I'm really pumped just to have Jay on and kind of like get his background story, right? I mean, because we see him all over the place. We see him publishing on Facebook, <clears throat> like running his, his two groups, um, you know, putting out all the value that he's putting out in the Unlimited Life Academy and everywhere else. And uh, I'm super pumped just to hear how that came about, right? To hear how that coalesced, so to speak, because we all have our, our own story when it comes to that. And um, cool, it looks like Jay is ready. So I'm going to bring him on. And uh, yeah, really pumped for this, guys. All right, one sec. There he is. There he is. What is up, Jay? Thank hey. you for coming on. Hey, what's going on, Ron? Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Super excited for this uh, interview. Appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you for for coming on. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a uh, you know something I haven't been doing that long yet. I think I've only mm -hmm. interviewed like three, four people. Yeah. But it's something I'm going to be doing every Saturday, and and I'm pumped to have you on and. And to kind of get your story, you know. Yeah, awesome, awesome, man. I enjoy your interviews. You're doing a great job, bro. Awesome. Awesome. Very awesome. Yeah. So um to kind of get started, man. Um can you uh just tell us a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit about yourself and like okay. like a, a brief summary, kind of like of what you do now, and then we can we can go back to how it how it started after that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh Jay Tantalanxi here, 38 years old. I got three kids, uh digital marketer. I have my own digital marketing agency. I'm also in real estate. Um, and I got it started off, you know, doing all these lives and you know uh create my own group creating the own movement the utah movement from the uh joining the 30-day live challenge you know that was kind of like the catalyst of how everything happened i kind of had this idea of uh, what i wanted to do i actually shifted from you know um having this uh group that was a start your own business group but which kind of morphed into the utah movement because mm -hmm. As I was helping my clients, you know, with their websites and their brands and all that stuff, you know, um, I started to notice that I was actually the one pushing them to, you know, go for their limits, right? Like go, like you know, taking their brand further. Like I was the one even believing in their products and services more than they were, and they were just like, wait, you know, like I could do that. I was like, yeah, like you have to really believe in what you're selling, right? So um, I was trying to, you know, give them a lot of value. Uh, and then I stumbled across, you know, Corey's page uh, at that time, Facebook group explosion. I don't even know how it came. I, I think I just came up on my feed, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I took the challenge because I, I was never doing lives at that point. Like I was like my live would just be like, you never see me. It was like my kids or, you know, my, the scenery and you'll hear my voice. And I was a bit, I was a bit, uh, you know, um, kind of intimidated, you know, to, to show myself, not intimidated, like intimidated for me. Like I just wasn't comfortable. Right. And, uh, I was just, um, you know, fear of like judgment, fear, all the, all the, all the normal things we fear of by going live. Uh, and then when I, when I took the 30 day challenge, you know, huge transformation, self-confidence shot up, you know, and then that kind of morphed into, you know, this Utah movement, me being the admin to the group, you know, connecting with you, connecting with all these other awesome people, and then just opportunities coming, you know, left and right using this amazing platform. So, um, yeah, that that's, that's how it started. And now that's like, you know, the, the the thing that I'm working on most right now is to get my my movement going, you know, um, 
uh, trying to inspire and motivate people to unleash their awesomeness, you know, because I feel we all have it. You know, we all have this something inside that the world needs to experience, you know. So that's that's how that's how it started. <laughs> Man, that that is such such an awesome story just because it's like the 30 day challenge has done that for so many people. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's crazy hearing hearing that because I'm honestly surprised that you weren't like doing live as before that. Mm, like mm. I, I didn't know that until yeah. just now. But even when you said that, I was like, ah, like I wanted to like say something, you know, like what? Yeah, man. I mean, if you see my lives in the in the 30 day challenge, you know, my first live was just just horrendous. You know, like I didn't know what I was gonna talk about. I was like, like at, until like seconds before, I was like, okay, how how am I gonna how am I gonna talk about this? You know, like, what am I gonna speak about for 30 days? Um, I decided like minutes before, I'm just going to share my, my quotes, you know, because I love collecting quotes. It, it inspires me and motivates me. So I was like, oh, I'm going to just talk about my quotes and just, you know, say what it means to me. Hopefully it might inspire somebody else. Right. And as the as the as the lives kept on going day, day after day after day and my confidence started going up, you know, um, my my uh, lives were a lot more lively you know more confident more like i was sure of myself you know like looking in the camera there's all these little nuances that happen right when you when you uh start to feel this confidence and and you, and you can see it you can see yourself and i was always you know watch re-watching my lives like oh man i say the word like a lot or you know like, <laughs> i'll say the word you know a lot like all this stuff and i'll start you know trying to change things around i don't know how many times i changed the intro you know, or like uh, you know even the titles were changing so like it was a whole learning process but it was great because we were in this amazing supportive encouraging group you know no judgment it was all like love you know and i felt really safe being myself you know sharing my authenticity i wasn't as vulnerable yet um i was just being a lot more authentic you know showing my uh, weird side sometimes, you know, just, uh, you know, pretty much saying what I thought, um, at the moment, but not really sharing my story story, you know, like about who I was and where I came from and stuff like that until like the later days of the, of the lives, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's what I think is, is, is the beauty in all of it. Cause you know, doing that, you kind of become a little bit more vulnerable cause you feel safe and then you, you know, you just like put yourself out there. And then you understand that, you know, when you put yourself out there, you might inspire somebody, you know, and that's, that's beautiful, man. That's awesome. You know, man, that that's huge. I feel like even going down that process, mm -hmm. um, like it, it's a process to get to the point where you're comfortable being vulnerable, like, with, and, and that's with people in general, not just mm -hmm. online, you know, you, you don't, you, you don't spill your guts to somebody that you right. meet the day that you meet them. And, mm -hmm. uh, and especially with groups of people, you know, but yeah. um, like, I, I totally agree. Like I was going live um, before that, but I was purposefully like before I joined the challenge, um, but I was purposefully going live on Instagram mm -hmm. because I knew it would disappear after a day. Mm. Right. Um, <laughs> that, that's yeah. why I was doing right, that. Right. And, uh, and why I wasn't doing it on Facebook. I was like, yeah. it's going to post. And yeah. But, I knew that I wanted to do that eventually, and I uh, and I was surprised that that you weren't doing lives before that because at the time when I joined the challenge, I think you had just finished, mm -hmm. or um, I remember you were already moderating, like when mm -hmm. I joined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and I found out later that that you would just finish a little bit before me. Right, and I was like, oh, because I didn't know I didn't know how long the group was around. Right, mm -hmm. I saw that there was mm -hmm. like a thousand members, so it had it maybe it's been around forever. Yeah, but it's before I knew Corey's story. Right, and right, this right. was like first couple days of lives that I did in there. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, uh, tell us a little bit, like to kind of pivot a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about your agency? It's just because I never, I haven't heard yeah. too much about it. And um, it sounds like you've had that, you know, up and running, yeah. you know, before the talent. Yeah, so um, a little backstory how I, you know, started the agency. So. I used to work in an international toy company in the corporate world for about, you know, three years. 
and I was handling their website. You know, they never had an e-commerce site. So now was at the point where mm. every company was like, you know, having their own like e-commerce part. Right. Uh, we also sold right. on Amazon. So I was, you know, uh, transitioning their, you know, um, B2B sales to our own online store sale. And I was like kind of heading that whole project. So, um, but you know, when I was in the corporate industry, I was just, just something was something was not right. I wasn't feeling it, you know. Uh, it just didn't feel right to me. So uh, I kind of started doing stuff on the side. I drove Uber for a little bit, you know, to to see like the time freedom, because I mean, I was you know working, you know, eight ten hours sometimes, and I was traveling a lot for work because I we we do like all these trade shows like all over the United States, right? Um, and uh, it was taxing uh, for me for a, uh, quite a bit because when you're traveling for work, like you're really working, you're not traveling and then, you know, going to see the sites and all that stuff, you right. know, you're like, and doing trade shows, man, it's like, you're on your feet for eight hours, you know, talking to customers and saying the same things over and over and over. And then when you get to your hotel room, all you want to do is sleep, you know, right. three days of that and, you know, breaking down the, the, the booth and all that stuff, it, just, it was just taxing. I, I, I think one year I was like traveling every other month, you know, sometimes twice a month. And it was just very taxing. Um, luckily, you know, I only had a, one kid at the time and it was just, you know, just missing, you know, them. And I was, uh, you know, with my wife, or well, fiance at the time. So I was like, we were like kind of have this long distance relationship <laughs> in, in those moments. But uh, so then, and I st so I started freelancing on the side to see how that would work. And uh, I got a pretty good response, right? So I was like building WordPress sites. I was using Builderall. When Builderall first came out, you know, um, Builderall uh, was um, int introduced their ambassador program. So I had the legacy ambassador program. Um, and I signed up, I think, under S Spencer Meacham. So yeah, he's still making money off of me <laughs> till today. Yeah. But um, but uh yeah, so I, I started doing that. I got some clients, you know, that we and then uh so I have my digit my agency, I have me and my partner. Um and he he's a really good friend of mine. We can, went to college together and uh he he's actually the Facebook ads expert on our team and he lives in Hawaii, so we kind of combined it was like, yeah, they, we we can make our own little boutique, you know uh, agency. Um, and at that time I was, you know, still learning like clip funnels and all that stuff and, you know, getting exposed to all of these different types of technologies and softwares. So, uh, like it was a huge learning process. Cause at that time I was only familiar with WordPress, you know, so I had to learn everything else. Um, and then once, once I learned, started learning everything else, you know, taking all these other like, you know, courses and master classes and, you know, you know, all these things like now it's like, I feel like I'm pretty versed in most of the things. So we've been, we've been around for the last, you know, three years. We have some uh, clients that are on like a monthly retainer with us. So, you know, we're doing pretty, we're doing all right. You know, it's not like we're not making gazillion dollars or anything like that, you know, <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right. but you know, you got, I mean, you have clients and yeah, we got clients. There's a lot of people that are, you know, trying to start an agency and they're their own client, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. they're, building stuff for self or for their agency. And mm -hmm. maybe they have, you know, a few people they're doing some free work for, they're like trying yep. to get the ball rolling. Yep. It sounds like you guys like came up with a plan mm -hmm. and, and, and turned, you know, came up with an idea mm -hmm. and, and turned it into a game plan and then just yeah. executed on it. That's what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah. And it, we, we use the whole strategy of like, you know, offering our services for free, getting the testimonials, you know, um, getting the word of mouth, uh you know uh marketing done because most of our our clients are in hawaii so my business partner um he was actually the guy that actually brought groupon to the islands right so for for that for that four years like any groupon you saw in hawaii it was probably him that went to go get that deal so he had mm -hmm. a lot of you know connections and clients and then uh, he, he quit groupon um, and then, you know, we, we, we were reaching out to those clients and then we kind of like offered a whole bunch of, you know, services to our friends who had businesses, you know, and then they referred. So that's how we kind of grew our client base. Um, and then, you know, from there, we just 
that we we really didn't do any type of uh you know hardcore facebook ad marketing campaigns or anything like that everything was pretty much like word of mouth referral you know like people we knew and stuff like that because every because i believe like every 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 time you meet someone you know like just 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 talk about what you do and then you know like and don't, don't even try to sell because we wouldn't even try to do that we was like oh yeah you know we we did this website for this person you know um and this is how we did it and then they'll just ask us oh you make websites and then you know it's like a natural conversation right and then right. they'll say like yeah like my cousin needs a website because he's like doing this I'm like oh yeah yeah here's, here's my card if you want to you know you know, holla at us let us know you know we're, we're here you know or um or, or I'll ask him like, oh, so what is what 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 is he doing right now? And, she, and she'll she'll like they'll be like, oh, you know, um, he has like Wix or whatever, but he doesn't know how to do it. So then I'll just go in there and just give him, you know, do it for him, right? And just say, hey, yeah. I, I could do it for you. It's easy, you know. It's like drag and drop. But there's just some other things that you may not know how to do and integrate. But I got it. You know, it's, it's not. It doesn't take long for us. But right at the end of the day, it's like you provide that value they're going to remember you. Right. And they're going to start referring and they're going to like, Oh yeah, man, Jay and, and no shame media. They, you know, they did this for me. And then I was like, you got to go check these guys out. Right. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. We have a pretty cool, um, uh, client that we did in Hawaii. Um, and they're like a donut shop and now they're like the rated, uh, 50 top donut spots in the United States. So that's mm. like one of our, cool clients that we have you know they're like on thrillist and stuff like that and on the news and it's amazing you know working with the entrepreneurs like that so <clears throat> that's <clears throat> excuse me gotta keep clearing my throat <clears throat> <laughs> try to get it all out right um that that's so um awesome there's one thing that i wanted to touch on that i yeah. just wanted to point out for the audience mm -hmm. um about about what you said and mm -hmm. um and about like getting referrals um, and like kind of setting off that word of mouth marketing. Mm -hmm. And that's that when you would go talk to a client or a potential client, just talk to a person. I shouldn't mm -hmm. even say a client. You talk yeah. to a person and uh, and then you show them about, you know, you show them what you do or what you've done for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're going to mention somebody else that they know yeah. that needs your service. and. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I would look at everybody like maybe this person needs my service or maybe this person needs my or maybe this. But the, the reality is, you know, they might not, but they probably do know somebody mm -hmm. else who does. And yeah. if, if we focus on just like bringing value and building a relationship like naturally, mm -hmm. you know, that's the only time that they're going to be in a, in a space that's safe enough for them to think. We had to sit back and think about other people they know, yeah. and bring them up to you that might need it. Um, right. If you're pitching them, they're, they're going to be defensive and they're definitely not going to, you know, let you know about other people that, mm -hmm. that your stuff. So, that, yeah, that's I mean, yeah, pe people can people can pick it up so quickly when you're trying to sell to them. You know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you you feel the same way when you go into the store and someone's trying to, like, you know, sell you a TV or whatever. Or, you know, we can see that from a mile away. Right. But if it's right. like if it's like natural and you're just trying to do it, you know, in a, in a genuine aspect, like, hey, this, you know, this is what we do, you know, let's talk. If not, cool, you know, like it's just not like it's not like we're forcing them to to like to do business. And we always know, like, as long as we have this mindset of like providing the value and just helping, like genuinely just helping, right? I don't know how many times I, you know, someone asked me to uh, about something. And they're not even our clients, you know, there's like, hey, you know, I got this WordPress site is it, uh, how do you integrate this? And I'll tell them this is how you do it or I'll do it for them, you know, and no charge. Like, cool. You know, it's doesn't take us doesn't take me long or like that. Right. So when they when you do like small acts of kindness in the, in that way, just because you're purely trying to help them out, because I, I believe like I believe in this whole like giving and karma and gratitude. Right. So if you're giving and you know providing all this value for them i mean it's just going to come back to you tenfold i don't know how many times it's like i've helped one person and then like they'll come back to me like you know six months later and like oh yeah do you remember so and so i was like oh yeah i did this one i was like oh yeah he recommended you know uh that you guys do websites and then they become our client you know so small things like that like you, you know like um 
I don't think, uh, you know, when you're starting out, you shouldn't think that you should charge for everything, you know, <laughs> because it's, uh, um, it, it, it could, it could, um, like I say, it, it, it can make the, it can make the person kind of like, you know, take a step back. Right. Instead of like trying to just be helpful. And that's, and that's, the, that's my approach all the time. Like I'm always trying to help. And I know like, if I'm always trying to help, things are just going to come back to me, you know? It's just right. the way the universe works, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I agree, man. Um, it's funny because when I, when I first made that switch um, mm -hmm. and, and learned that I need to just be helping instead of yeah. trying to help and get, you know, together, right. and figure exactly. out how to do that together. And when I finally let that go, Mm -hmm. um, that's when I got my first affiliate sales. When I finally mm -hmm. was just like, cause I was going in Facebook groups and answering mm -hmm. questions, but trying to get sales from it. Mm -hmm. And it was just obvious. I was like in the ClickFunnels affiliate group, trying mm -hmm. to answer questions and then saying, message me if you, this is before they became really strict on the rules, like lately, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like a year ago and, and nobody ever would. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't until um, I just would answer the questions and just say, like, at the end of like a very long answer, explaining everything that they were asking about. And then I would just say, uh, you know, if you ever have any more questions, just leave a comment in the group, tag me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can hit me up basically, but without saying message me. Right. And actually, I tell people not to message me, just yeah. leave it in the group so other people can see the question right. and the answer. Yeah. And then people started messaging me and friend requesting me and, and that led to my first sales. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's when I really was like, Oh, just help people. Yeah. But man, um, uh, I, I love it, man. I love the fact that I feel like you're a few steps ahead of me when it comes to uh, like the marketing side mm -hmm. and putting stuff together, building a team and like executing. And, um, so it's just interesting to me to hear about like how long did it take for you to put the like agency together from the time you had the idea to like having clients? Yeah, good question. So um, we were still putting the 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 agency together when we got our first client, and when I say first client, this was non paid, right? So we were we were helping him build free because we wanted to get like a testimony from him, right? Yeah. Um, and I still consider that a client because I'm still getting something from that person. And we did this whole, you know, we redid his whole site for him. And I took, I think it took us like, um, maybe three months, you know, to, to put everything together, uh, to, to, to do our offering. I think initially we were doing like Facebook advertising, social media management, web and graphic design, and then business development. You know, that's when we initially started, right? Now it's just like web and graphic design and Facebook ads. Like we totally right. took out business development, totally took out social media management because it was just taking that's a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. Like we and we had to learn that. And my partner actually was getting burnt out doing social media, even though we even though it was bringing in a lot of income, it was just a lot of work. You know, you can't really uh, from, from our experience, you can't really um be the voice of a brand uh, you know specifically if it's like an entrepreneur unless like you're with them 24 7 you know you know everything about them and stuff like you know it's, it's when, when you're trying to grow your brand personally like that like it's ha it has to be you I, I think gary v said that same thing like you can't really outsource social media stuff you know unless you're like you know multi-million dollar company you know what i mean like that can you know spend all that money and have all these different type of campaigns and tones and you know avatars and stuff like that. But we were working with entrepreneurs, you know, starting off in their business, in their small business, in their personal brands. So it was a you know it was pretty uh pretty tough. And I just remember you know, at that point we're like, man, what what are we gonna do? Because I'm spending like four hours a day creating content and then we had to create content for ourselves. And, right. you know, at that point we had like a whole bunch of, you know, clients and it was just, um, it was crazy. So now it's just like, we're focusing on, you know, two specific things. Um, I think it, it took like seven months at that point where we kind of, you know, dwindled down our, uh, our services um, to, to really hone in on the things that we're really good at. Right. Yeah. And even yeah. now, yeah. And even exactly trim the fat. And even now, um, you know, we want to focus a lot more on sales. So I'm even, you know, trying to 
build our team to you know to do like the the web design part right like i still love designing i just don't like building you know <laughs> it still takes a lot of time for me to build so i'm like trying to like you know bring people on on my team to to do the building side like i love designing like i use like you know photoshop and sketch and all that stuff to design it out and then i could just like hey this is the design go build it you know do all the integrations whatever it is and then we get it done so i'm grateful that we're at that point right now you know and it's been such a time saver because now it's like i can focus on you know just building the rapport with our clients you know um, giving them a lot more value you know uh, trying to go out there and get more clients you know so that that, that we can handle because now we have a pretty good system in uh in doing that you know it's like a you know it's like uh, we when, when we sign on a client it's like initial consult you know and then uh we give them the whole you know um process of how things are going to go down depending on their services um and we pretty you know we pretty much have it you know um uh tied down as far as like you know how much time we spend with them for the initial consult and then you know after after everything is done boom you know maybe like two to three weeks depending on how big the the site is or what their needs are you know so yeah gotcha so um uh i'm just curious because like when i first got into uh funnel building yeah and uh and I was building funnels, but I wasn't finding too much success with my own because I, I didn't have that like, know, and trust factor. Right, you know, right. now I know why I was publishing content about it enough. Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, you know, a podcast a week and yeah, that's, yeah. that's enough, right? Yeah. And I'm not interviewing anybody on it, just me talking about funnels. And, yeah. and so I wasn't really making progress. I, you know, I had a few sales here and there. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, some other people started to notice, you know, what I was doing. And so, I ended up building a funnel for somebody for free yeah. uh, just because I knew I, I can get this guy sales because he already mm -hmm. had the audience mm -hmm. and, and I did. And um, so that funnel made some money and it ended up getting shut down later on. It's not because of the funnel. It's a long story. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay. the client services, there's the yeah. whole other side that you can't control. Like right, the right, client, right. Of course, do, yeah. the decisions they want to make, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, but anyways, uh, I ended up getting my first, paid client um a few months after that mm -hmm. and you know i was really conflicted whether i wanted to like maybe build an agency or uh like build funnels for other people or mm -hmm. or keep uh working on my personal personal brand and just building yeah. them for myself yeah and it, and it wasn't until i went through like the agency experience but like the i shouldn't say agency i should say freelancer because mm -hmm. it's me nobody right. else yeah you know um i'm doing all of it yeah. so yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is what what moved you more towards the agency model instead of building, taking what you knew and what you mm -hmm. were doing and, and building it for yourself. Um, yeah. 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 So, um, good question. So we we took the agency route because you know it wasn't just me. It was like my partner, and he mm -hmm. had a specific thing that he was really good at. Right. I, I I'm not I'm not strong in Facebook advertising or whatnot. Like I I know. I can pretty much do my own ads, but I'm not like, you know, in depth about all the different things that, uh, you know, Facebook and keeping up with the algorithms and all that stuff. And he was like pretty much, you know, good on social media too, because that's, he actually did have his own, um, like for like six months, I think like his own social media company, like management company. So we kind of just combined the two. And then that's why we think, oh, we, we can add this like, you know, all these services at once. And like I said, be like a boutique, you know, um, agency, you know, so we can provide, you know, the services and we always upsold, you know, our, our, uh, our clients, um, if they needed it. Right. So like most of our clients, they, they of course they needed a website. Right. But then like most of them didn't know the power of social media, you know, so we would pitch that to them and be like, Hey, you know, if we, if we make you a site, like, you know, a lot of traffic and brand awareness can come from, you know, having a social media presence, we recommend, you know, Facebook and Instagram, at least, you know, like, you know, if you're going to do like a personal brand. Um, so they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So what do I need about what do I need to do that? I was like, well, you need to create your Facebook business page, you know, you need to create your, you know, uh, Instagram, uh, Instagram account. And then, you know, we'll do like, you know, 
uh, a post a day or two posts a day, depending on how much your budget is and all this stuff. So, you know, one client was like, you know, plus the web web design services on top of, you know, if they get the social media management, it was like an extra, you know, like thousand dollars a month, you know, based, based on that. But like I said, man, social media management is, is so, <laughs> so like time consuming, you know, um, specifically, and we have a lot of clients, but that's why we did the, the agency route because we felt that we can, we were, we were good enough in our own specialties that together we can actually, you know, provide, you know, all those services. Cause he would sign clients, who just wanted, you know, website stuff. And he would just kind of like, you know, uh, say, Hey, you know, uh, let's have a meeting with my partner, you know, and, and then, and then I'll be the one pitching the website and doing all the presentations is like that. Right. And then vice versa. If I had a client that just needs Facebook advertising or a campaign, I'd be like, Oh, let me, put, let me bring my partner in, you know, like he's the Facebook ads expert. So that's why we, this, that's why I decided to do that. And I, I always feel like, you know, if you have someone else as, as a partner, you know, it's like uh, the burden isn't as bad because sometimes I'll, even when I'm when I'm designing, like I'll because we, we always go through every uh, we, we we sell because we know our strengths. But sometimes I'll be like, hey, bro, like, what do you think about this? You know, like like this design, does that match with, you know, what you're doing for Facebook ads? And he'll give me his his feedback, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 why we did the whole agency route. Right. That, that makes sense, too, because you guys you you guys both have skills that complement each other. Right. You know, yeah. like that. That's all you need. The traffic mm -hmm. and then where the traffic is going. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that makes a lot a lot of sense. I, I guess uh, for me, like once I started doing the funnel building for other people, it, it mm -hmm. was really, really funny. I didn't notice that this would happen. I mean, and maybe this is just me. I am not anybody mm -hmm. watching this. This doesn't mean that you're going to feel like this. But like right beforehand i started to really love copywriting but like mm. in a sense where i love figuring out clever ways to tell yeah. my story that's yeah. really what i what i figured out but yeah. I, I didn't um so i thought that i would just love copywriting in general for anybody right and, mm -hmm. and um and so like i i wrote a couple email sequences for some people um and then I got that client and I was building his funnel and his email sequence and all that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until like I was actually like paid by somebody else to do it. And I had to like research and, and really dive into yeah. their message and what they're about and what everything, you know, what what they're trying to build and what they're building it for, you know, all the homework to to be able yeah. to really write that stuff out right yeah. and, and do it. It's just um like I still like the process, but the thing is. The whole time I missed doing it for myself. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I just wanted like, yeah. like I liked it, but I liked mm -hmm. doing it for me way more. And mm -hmm. uh, and and I was feeling like like uh, the people in my group. I'd be thinking about them. Like I got to do yeah. live videos, or I have to, but I have to do this first as the paid client. Mm -hmm. I have to take care of them first. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, I and, get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm I'm, I'm kind of on that. I'm kind of on that uh, level right now. You know, I mean, luckily, luckily, our clients are low maintenance at the point and we haven't gotten, you know, we haven't uh, signed on any new clients because uh, he's working on some some of his own stuff. I'm working on my own stuff. So, you know, um, we're, we're, we're blessed that we have that 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 uh, capability. But like, I understand, like, Sometimes, you know, when a client calls me for maintenance stuff and, and I'm like, wait, wait, I, I still have to do my live for my group, though, you know, like, but then at the same time, I'm like, wait, he's they're paying the bills. Let me do this first, you know, and then I'll go and, you know, do my live or work on my stuff because I'm I'm at the at the moment trying to uh, grow my personal brand. Right. So, like, I love like you said, I love working on my own stuff. Like I'm working on my own funnel right now. I'm working on my own ebook right now that I'm coming out with. I'm writing my book right now. So it's like, it's like, that's, that's why like I even had to change my schedule around and my priorities. So like I wake up, you know, three, three 30 in the morning, do my me time. And then the first thing I do is all the stuff that I have to do for my clients. And then I'll do my stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So it gets it out of the way really quick. If I have like, if I have to put out fires, you know, for my clients, that's like first and foremost. And then, you know, I, you know, then, then I'll start doing my stuff, but like the whole, like, 
where am I going to allocate my my passion? Of course, it's going to be for my stuff, right? Because <laughs> I'm just like, this is what I want to do. Because like, I feel like it's my purpose to serve, you know, uh, right. my my community, my group, and you know those those that are uh, connected to me. Because that's that's for me, that's the higher that's the highest thing, right? But at the moment, it's uh, it's what pays the bills. So, you know, that's a priority. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. Um, I do. I. It, it's so crazy how like as soon as we start talking about that, other people are like, I totally relate to this. That's why I was <laughs> the down there. Yeah, I see um, that. Yep. Because it's like we uh, we, we all want to serve people, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we, we have like like for me, it seems like the sweet spot that I'm looking for. And like just myself is is I'm looking for the one thing that that I know I love to do, mm -hmm. like with other people too, mm -hmm. but that, that will also pay the bills, right? Mm -hmm. Like out of all of this, um, even though I already know that I'm in the right zone, I'm in the right yeah. area compared to where right. I was at with you know with the day jobs. It's right. definitely a, um, much warmer, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think uh. I think the important takeaway though is that we we don't really know what we're gonna like for sure until mm. we try it, you know, or yeah. until we, we taste it. And, and 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 even my experience wasn't a true agency experience. So I didn't have help. I wasn't outsourcing anything. Like like really now that I look back on it, what I could have did um, is as soon as I got paid to build all the little minute stuff that yeah. I didn't really like, I could have just went on Fiverr and found people yep. for that. Stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. then focus on what i like to do yeah uh, yeah and uh yeah it's just it's a process so even yeah. even like starting i know that what i was doing would be way more refined and easier if i mm. kept doing it you know just yeah like any yeah i mean for, for, for us it was it was for us it was kind of necessity that we had to build our team and outsource mm. some of the things just because like I said, you know, we had we had a full load of, of of things that we had to do, and um, at that point, I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't I wasn't even working on anything. Like my my own personal brand was non-existent, right? Um, until we started, like you know, uh, like I said, outsourcing things and you know, freeing up a lot of time, you know, and, and then we started focusing on sales and you know, building the rapport with our clients and giving them a lot more attention. You know, so I, and all the small stuff, you know, we, we even outsource our, you know, website maintenance. Right. Um, so like if the, our clients need to get something done or post up, like, you know, I'm, I'm just now I'm now I'm just a project manager. Right. I'll just like send them a slack like, hey, you know, client this need, need, needs to do this. Can you do it? You know, and I'll tell them 24 hours. We'll get it up. You know, so I used to do all that myself you know for like like six clients and then like that would be my whole night like my whole like till like three in the morning you know like i need i had no me time like it was just all that you know fire breathing entrepreneur you know journey like burning the you know candle on both sides you know <laughs> it was like crazy like yeah my and you know and no time you know with the family at all and stuff so, yeah, it was, you know, I think all entre entrepreneurs go through this journey, you know, um, and you have to really learn about, you know, prioritizing uh, what's more important to you, uh, wh where you want to spend your time on. And at the same time, like you need to really like, like, like hone in on your schedule, man. I have this Wonderlist app, right? And uh, I put down every task that I need to do every single day it's a daily wonder list task so if i have fires that i put out on the clients it'll be the first task right it'll be like hey i gotta um i gotta integrate this plugin for this client and i, I gotta do this for this client you know integrate a weber for click funnels for this client and every time i i do it so I, I allocate you know two to three hours and so every time i do it i'll check it off and I feel really good, right? Because everything is done. And I'll double check. Is everything done? No emails are coming in from over there. Okay, cool. If I finish early, I have an hour to maybe work on my stuff or like, you know, do other things, family, whatever. Um, and then like, I, I also allocate stuff for just for me, like my lives, you know, my group stuff. And I schedule things out, you know, like this is what I'm going to do. Google Calendar is my best friend you know yeah. and that helps with my, even my wife like she was actually the one that implemented that for us because 
you know, when you have a family and, and, and it's tough and you're you know, working from home sometimes, like, um, you know, it can happen, you know, uh, you know, especially when you have kids, like all oh, these events come up all of a sudden, you know, birthdays and all this stuff. And then, and then like, uh, every event that I have for my business, I actually invite her to it so she can see my whole calendar. So now we have this like mirror, like, you know, she'll know like, okay, this time slot is he's doing this at this time. And she has access to that. Right. Cause, um, yeah. Cause you know, she's like my, she's like my number one client, right. <laughs> at the end of the day, she's like the, you know, the, the foundation that keeps the family together while I'm, you know, trying to do all this stuff and support our family. So like she has to, she has to be the one that uh, sees all the management, but it, at the same time, I have to be really good at that too, you know, because sometimes I'll forget and I'm like, no, but I had this interview with this one. He's like, well, you didn't put it in the calendar. That's my fault. You know what I mean? Like I, I could take full accountability for that. Like if I didn't put it in the calendar, that's, that's all me, you know? So I, I have to apologize, but you know, being an entrepreneur, you really have to be like organized, you know? And if you have a family, you have to even be more organized, you know? <laughs> so right. work life balance, entrepreneur and life balance, you know? <laughs> yeah and it's funny because those things are usually like a, a, an oxymoron right like right. yeah uh, at least when we we're first getting started um but yeah the google calendar man that's been yeah. huge for me especially with after starting to do lives and after mm -hmm. you know, starting to want to interview people and then having mm -hmm. other people reach out and want you know mm -hmm. people you know want me to come on their show or just yeah. like with us being able to like have that link where it's like we're just sign up for it here and then we yep. both it's in our calendars yeah you know, we could just forget about it much until like the day of we're like oh yeah that's what i'm doing or yeah. we can look to plan it out and, um but i didn't want to uh i saw jerome ask the question and i wanted to make sure that that we covered it yeah um, yeah when's that ebook dropping oh it's 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 dropping pretty soon maybe like next week i'm just putting the finishing touches on it right now so look out for that sometime next week. And and those that have taken the challenge, the 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 Utah 30 days of awesomeness challenge, you guys will you guys will definitely get it. I mean, it's just a shorter version uh, of the 30 day challenge. I kind of um I kind of uh not simplified, but I I I I compressed it, you know, to to now being seven days because I want people to to go through that whole to go through that whole experience. Um and be really intentional about it so they don't have to spend 30 days, you know, to, to, to kind of discover what their, what their awesomeness is right after they go yeah. through the ballet system. So, um, seven days, I thought was like a, a really good number. You know, people can, you know, really hone in each day, like, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day, but being really, you know, intentional about it. And then, you know, at that point, take it to the next level, which is like creating your movement. Right. So, um, that's what it's going to be about a little bit of backstory about how it, you know, it all came about and stuff like that too. So I was going to go into Yeah, it. man. Yeah. Look, look, look out for that, you know, prepare to give me your email address too. I'm going to disclose everything, you know, so you, I could put you on my list and give you some more value. That's how we do it. You know, digital marketers, <laughs> you already know. <laughs> right. yes, yes. No shame yeah. whatsoever. And, no. and uh, I'm glad that you brought that up though, because, yeah. uh, or, you know that that we brought that up because um that's actually i've been meaning to join your challenge yeah, i'll yeah. put it on the record that uh um, yeah, yeah. be happening soon um mm -hmm. yeah because you know there's it, it's funny as we grow as marketers or uh, like uh, one of the things that i'm starting to learn is that we can't put all of our focus everywhere at the same right. time yeah. because then it's like there's there's no room left for building or for whatever it is that you're doing so it's yeah. like, yeah, selectively focus or you have to focus on things selectively and mm -hmm. like you know put things on like this is the next week's shelf and this mm -hmm. is like right after that and yeah. but um at the same time um <laughs> at the same time um um uh i'm still to go through i was laughing at jerome's comment he's like yeah, okay no, I <laughs> <laughs> jerome my man my man <laughs> jerome um but yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit more about about the group, um, about yeah. UI, about the uh, the CLC group with CLC, no CTC. Yeah, CTC. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, 
I kind of I kind of want to mention something too before you know I, I get into it. But <clears throat> the 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 Utah movement um, has a has a has a process to it, right? So I came up with this process uh, because I was going through that same type of transformation with myself and uh, the vulnerability part. You actually had some influence in that, and I and I want to tell you because. Um, and that's why I wanted you to get on my group so I can interview you to tell you, but I'm going to tell you in this interview. So um, I remember watching one of your lives and you were sharing your vulnerability about going to the store and then like you couldn't pay for it. You were so worried that your debit card wouldn't go through and you were just like, or it didn't go through. And then you were like, wow, man, because you, 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 you forgot that you know, something came out of your bank and then you were like feeling embarrassed and you were just like, damn, like, I'm just going to eat noodles. You know, like, see, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps like talking about it right now, man. It was really powerful. And I was like, man, this kid is like, like putting himself out there. And, that, and at the same time, I was like, I felt that shit too. Cause there are so many times where I didn't think where the next paycheck was going to come from, or I didn't, I didn't know, where I was going to make that money, you know, to, 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 to live, you know, and to, just to, to buy the necessities. And it was like, that's where I was like, man, his vulnerability is so powerful. Right. And at that point I was never, I was never vulnerable myself, you know, um, based on my upbringing, like, you know, first generation from, you know, Asia, you know, Asian parents not not able to share our feelings. Like we were never emotional. I could never, you know, cry. You know, <laughs> um, but my wife is like the total opposite, right? So like you and my wife are kind of like this this uh, catalyst in being like we need to be more vulnerable. And I started studying it, and I started. You know, I looked into Brene Brown, and you know, I found out that you know vulnerability is actually a a, a superpower. You know, like the more we are vulnerable and open, um, you know, we can actually affect other people and also heal ourselves, you know, and just share our story. So that whole valet part of the process. Uh, so it's valid. So uh, the Utah process is through the valet valet system. Right. So vulnerability, authenticity, love, experiences and truths. So the vulnerability part was the first thing because I wanted people to like really go inside of them and kind of open up a little bit more and not be afraid to share, you know, some of those hard, vulnerable moments that make you who you are, you know? And when I saw your live, I was like, man, I was really taken back. I was like, and I even, I think I made a live about it too. Like, did I make a live? Yeah, I think so. I was like, yeah, man. Like, I was like, yeah, Ron is, man, my, my man, Ron Carter. And I was in the, you know, it was in the ULA community. I think I remember. I was, yeah. I was just so in, impressed in the, and moved by it, you know, that I was like, yeah, we, a lot more people need to do this. So you were kind of, you were kind of a little bit of the influence in this whole process, man. So uh, thank you. I'm that, grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful hearing that because like, that's to me, that's what this is all about. Like mm -hmm. that's what this whole thing is all about. Like you, you never, like to me that day when I did that live, just mm -hmm. to give, everybody watching some, some, a little bit of context. Um, I, like what had happened, I remember specifically, um, like just a few months before that, I was like struggling to like pay rent and I was behind yeah. on stuff and I just gotten out of like that hole. And, um, and at the same time, I upgraded my Git response account. I, yeah. I upgraded yeah. to like this hundred dollar version because I was yeah. trying to, I was trying to figure out how to do something in there, and I thought that it was like a locked part of the of of the software. But mm -hmm. it turns out that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I had upgraded. I paid a hundred bucks for that month, and then um, I forgot the downgrade. Right? I just yeah. forgot. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I was yeah. like Do other stuff, and I was like, I'll, I'll get to it. And it was on the back of my mind for like the whole month. Um, and I just started going live. I was going through the challenge and. Mm -hmm. So super busy, you're replying to comments and, and everything and just forgot to upgrade. <clears throat> and I went to Jack in the Box that night and it was like a few days before like my payday or something, ordered my, my food. It was already like cheap food to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I went to pay and just like minutes before that, I had checked my bank. I was like, okay, it's like 
20 bucks or, or no, it was more than that. It was the hundred and something. Yeah. Um, but it, it was just enough that like that, that get response charge went through like between yeah. me being outside and walking into Jack in the box. And then when I paid, it was declined. And I was like, what? It's like just tacos and a burger. Like it doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, and, yeah. I checked, and I was like, Oh man. Yeah. And then I, yeah. I did that live yeah. when I was walking into Ralph's to yeah, yeah. buy noodles. <laughs> Right, right, and, right. Um, no, but then uh, on, and, on top of that, on top of that, um, I remember now. I remember clearly now. You you ended it by saying, because uh, the whole the whole the whole lesson and 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 beauty of it all was, uh, you kept persisting, right? You kept persisting. You kept helping, and then you you signed on this client that wanted that you did a funnel for, and then when you finished the funnel. Um, Oh, well, you didn't finish the funnel first. You just showed him uh, exactly what the funnel was going to look like. And he was actually going to he was actually going to front you the money, the rest of the money to build oh, it. And you were yeah. like, no, 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 no. It's cool. I'm not I'm not going to take your money because I'm not done with it yet. And I was yeah. and that was the second part. I was like, he's vulnerable. And this guy has like. The uh, integrity. And I was like inspiration. I was like, wow, like this the, Mr. Ron Carter is such an awesome human being right and then he was like yeah and when I, when i did that i finished the funnel and you know I, I i got he he paid me the rest of the money and i went home to eat a steak <laughs> i was like that is what i'm talking about it's just the crazy how the universe works that way but you you stay true to your word because you wanted to finish not take his money but finish what you told him you were going to finish and then all these great things happen right and I was like, that was just a, just amazing story. I was so like wowed by it. That's why I had to like make a, make a live about it, which kind of, you know, influenced the whole vulnerability part of the process. Right. It, it, you know, it's, um, it's just, that's what I love about, about this process. And when I say this process, I just mean being able to impact yeah. other people by sharing our story, right. Yeah. By sharing the stuff that people don't, usually want to share mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. stuff that we we share to like our you know the closest people in our lives mm -hmm. and, and we are kind of nervous then but but mm -hmm. we do it and and it's like it's almost like like the people that are closest to us in our lives are closest to us in our lives because we share that kind of stuff right right and it's not yeah. like we find the close person and then we share it's mm -hmm. like it's a, it's a back and forth thing right mm -hmm. and when we put ourselves out there, um, you know, to the public, yeah. uh, you know, we're going to attract other like people that, yeah. that are similar. like, that's, we're here right now. Right. Yeah. Right. And, exactly. Um, yeah. And it, 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 it even, it even took me a, a while to even, you know, go on my own personal Facebook profile to share my stuff. You know, I was, I was actually comfortable sharing in my groups and in the, you know, Facebook group explosion. And when I created my group, but, I never, it took me a while to even share my personal page, right? Until I got over that kind of like uncomfortable feeling. Cause I was like, man, these are like my, my people, you know, like people that are like really are close to me and most of them. Right. And I'm just like, man, they don't, they don't really know these things about, I'm th and then I start thinking about all these specific people where I'm thinking, but well, what are they going to think about me? It's just, it's just, a, it's just a natural thing to think about because we're still, in that fear mode right but uh and then i started to realize like wait a second you know like if i'm sharing this to you know people that really don't know me you know like the whole facebook group explosion right and they're responding this way like i'm sure that if i share it with you know my friends they'll 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 be okay with it right and when i started doing that i started getting all these like messages and you know you know uh comments and like all this you know people like connecting with me and it telling me like man i didn't know about i didn't know this about you but damn bro like for real i was like yeah you know and they'd be like man that really that really hits me because i'm going through the same thing you know and and, and then that's that's the epiphany aha moment you're like that's where you can impact right that's where you can create the impact just by sharing right, right. And, and, and it's not it's not it's not you trying to be uh you know trying to get any like vanity points or you know trying to be this you know um 
um like guru or anything like that it's just like you just sharing your story authentically because you feel like you know like someone else out there can can listen to it and take it as their survival guide sometimes you know like when i first share my story about you know uh me not being emotional and being vulnerable and being like a douchebag because i didn't because I, I was angry you know i was frustrated and yeah I, yeah I didn't know how to handle my emotions like i don't know how many people hit me up I was like dang but I, I i wouldn't even imagine you were like that i was like yeah dude like in other in my past relationships i was a dick you know <laughs> like when i was like when i couldn't handle the the the, the conflict i was that dude you know but um like i said once you start sharing and once you start um you know being a lot more vulnerable and open you you tend to like heal a lot more right so i'm now like super aware and like you know i can understand where those emotions and feelings come from you know my past traumas and stuff like that and I, and, and like now it's like when i talk to someone and I, and i'm sharing like i'm hoping that it that it helps them in some way shape or form you know because they might not be as courageous to, or, you know, not even understand that, you know, if they share it back, that it might help them, right? They're not at that level yet. But right. because we are, you know, I think it's it's our duty to do that because we want to inspire and impact those, you know, that are somewhat kind of timid about it, you know? 100%. So, yeah. I 100% agree. It's um when I was... Uh, you know, back back when I was like trying to figure out how to not like use drugs like years yeah. ago. Um, yeah. A lot of people in my group know. Yeah. I've, I keep forgetting this is going to be on YouTube later, so some people might not know. Yeah. But um, uh, I was you know strung out on the street. This is after I got out of the Air Force. Um, mm -hmm. And the thing when my life started turning around was. You know, I was in a rehab, and mm -hmm. every night I was going to AA meetings. And yeah. and when I would go uh, go to these meetings, I would share whatever about that was bothering me throughout the day. And, and a lot of other people did. Mm -hmm. And you know, depending on the meeting, there's different ones where you know there's a, a main speaker. There's some where we all just share. Yeah. Um, but um, that's where I really started to first experience that and experience like feeling vulnerable, mm -hmm. and then having people be immediately receptive. And then, and then knowing that it's okay, and mm -hmm. then feeling better, and, and and from doing that consistently, day in, day out, day in, day out, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what's changed me as a person. Yeah. You know, like changed yeah. me from who I was to who I am. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's so important, especially when you find somebody that may need your help or that doesn't even know that they need it. Right. That that um but they do yeah. right or like maybe maybe you can tell they do just because they're listening right yeah. just the fact yeah. that you're attention to the story yeah. uh, and uh and they may not like start sharing their vulnerabilities right away but they may be interested enough to keep listening mm -hmm. or, to, or to watch again and mm -hmm. and it's a process right and and that alone like it i feel like that is the like it's better than any any payment that I can get for anything, right? The feeling that I get from knowing that there an, a positive impact yeah. is made from from something that I had just a small part of, mm -hmm. right? I even consider my story that that's a small part. Like I have a small part in my story. There's all these mm -hmm. other things that had to happen. Get response had to charge me the hundred dollars, yeah. but <laughs> I had to give it to them. All these things had to happen that yeah. I was involved in. I just shared with you what happened, yeah. and. Uh, um, and uh, it's so powerful so, yeah um, yeah definitely i mean that's and that's why you know we we stress we stress this a lot we meaning like me you i know i know jerome we we know like you know we have all this we have a lot of value to share right and that's the value in our stories the value in the time that we take to share it going live you know being courageous enough to to be vulnerable and another thing that i understand too is you know, before I, I started being vulnerable, I just thought about, you know, the judgment, right? What are people going to think about me? When when I shifted to this different mind, mindset and perspective of everybody's going through some shit. Everybody has something that they're trying to work through, you know, um, trying to get by, you know, like we, 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 we really don't know, right? But if we can share, if we can like connect 
and if we can make an impact, that's what makes it worthwhile. You know, um, it's like right. sometimes we we know their glory, but really we we really don't know their story, right? So, I mean, just having that mindset and that knowledge, like, okay, uh, I I'll share with you, I'll be vulnerable, but I know, like, you know, not and no one's perfect, right? I mean, you get we all have struggles, we all got life always hits us. You know what I mean? And and sometimes if we share it, like they, they can they can listen and be like, yeah, man, I know exactly how you feel because that shit happened to me. Or, you know, like, man, I just I was just going through that last week. You know, and you're like and then you're just like, oh, man, like you're not alone. You know, you don't feel so alone and you don't feel like, you know, the world is, you know, against you. Right. Because, you know, like I said, life teaches you the lessons, <laughs> you know. Um, All right. But listening to somebody else tell their story can can definitely massively help, you know, you heal or help help you more understand or just, you know, make you feel like you're not alone. You know, and that's important. Exactly. exactly. Um, man, you you drop just like a ton of value, not only on Facebook, but in this interview <laughs> alone. man. And uh uh, I'm super appreciative uh, for you and for connecting with you. Um, I'm so glad that I joined the Unlimited Life Academy because that's where we connected and I joined it just like you did. Like I found it yeah. in my feet. And mm -hmm. um, and for everybody watching too, Jerome, Gerald, um, I know that there was a few other people on earlier. Um, but yeah, Rachel as well. She yeah. she was in here. Ed Rozell, um, Daryl Stout. Ricky Rivera, yeah. Nathan Spells, and Soy. I probably pronounced that wrong. Soy, Soy, Anna. You know who I'm. Anna, you know who I'm yes. Anna, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jamie was here as well. Remigius was here as well. Sam IV, Pina. Thank you guys for hopping on. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, awesome. Is there a, you know, anything else that you want to add? Um, before we kind of close out or before, uh, yeah, before we kind of bring this to an end. Um, I know I do want to mention your groups and stuff, but yeah, um, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, you know, we, we all, we also have another group, uh, the changes through challenges group that uh, Earl and I created. Um, and it's just, it's just about trying to challenge yourself every single day to move outside your comfort zone. Right. So, cause that's how we, that's how we grow. And, um, I love that group because, you know, if it wasn't for taking challenges, I wouldn't be in this position today, right? I wouldn't be as comfortable. I wouldn't be as vulnerable. I wouldn't be doing Facebook lives. I wouldn't be here <laughs> doing interviews with you, right? If I didn't take a challenge, take the first step, you know, get over that fear of doing it and staying committed, then I'd I don't know where I'd be. I'd probably be just designing websites, you know, in my office and not doing this right. And not having this Utah movement. So, um, yeah. what I want to tell people and leave, uh, you know, with folks is, you know, um, we're all here. I think for our purpose is to just become a better person from, you know, who we were yesterday. Right. Um, and that's on your own time, but you have to be taking a deliberate step, in you know doing that right um, you, i see your your journey and i'm you know grateful to be a part of it and witnessing you know the transformation witnessing all the accolades that you're doing you know getting your clients like all the people that i've connected with so far in our groups is like I've, it's just been a blessing to me because i get to be a part of it somehow right but um if if we don't take that deliberate intentional step you know to to decide like okay Today, this is what I'm going to do. I want to be better. I want to be, you know, I want to hit the button or I want to start my book or I want to, you know, uh, you know, go live, whatever, like, just do it, you know, just do it. Like, don't have the feet. Don't, don't, don't fear. Don't have any of those, those fears, right? You don't have to listen to your mind. You don't have to listen to your anxiety. You know, your fear is, 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 is just there. You don't have, really have to like pay attention to it. Right. Cause you can still control your actions, right? You can still be fearful and still take your finger and hit the button. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. you have that capability. That's, that's what I want to, that's what I want to put out there. Like we all have that capability. So that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, we got a, we got one more question that came in. Uh, yeah, for from sure. Jerome, says Facebook user, but this is from Jerome. 
Yeah. What's your favorite book so far that you've read during the CTC? CTC. Oh man, great, great. Uh, it's crazy because um, on this self improvement journey, the one that I that I finished that I, that I'm like that's impacting impacted my life so much is the the can't can't hurt me by David Goggins. Uh, it's I mean th- the dude is like the epitome of the hardest guy who's been through the craziest life, you know? Um, for example, like this morning, I didn't, I didn't want to go for my morning run and my, do my morning routine. And I was having some negative thoughts entering my mind, you know, and just telling me, just go back to sleep. You know, you know it's a Saturday. Why are you going to go run and all that stuff? And I shit you not, Ron, like every single time, it's happened to me a couple of times already. And every single time that's happened to me, David Goggins face uh, pops in my head and he's like, stay hard. Let's do this. You know, <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. Right. So it's such an inspirational story. You know, it, it's a story of will. It's a story of like, you know, mindset. It's a story of just overcoming all those obstacles that life is going to throw at you. And he's had such a crazy life you know like it made me look back on my life and i'm like okay my life isn't you know that bad but damn like he's he's gone through it's not even just life it's 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 like the mental emotional physical pain you know uh uh and, and his whole mindset going into it that that we can have this amazing reach our amazing human potential right we have so much potential we just don't tap into it right he gives us the insights and strategies and outlook and perspective to like tell ourselves like yeah we can fucking do this you know we can do anything we put our mind to we just we just gotta do it you know <laughs> so that's been so far right now hands down most uh impactful book for sure thanks for asking the questions Jerome. and i still actually have to read that myself okay. yeah right now i'm on like reading just stuff that's applicable to exactly what I'm doing, but that's yeah, applicable. Yeah. It's yeah. totally applicable to what you're doing. So yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, I actually need to put it on the list, but I've consumed a lot of his, well, some of his content and a lot of the interviews that he's been on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Jerome, def- I'm it's sorry. Definitely, yeah. No, I was going to say it's definitely, uh, it gives, like I said, it gives you like a, a perspective on life that anything is anything is possible. You know, if you can go through all that and still, you know, be who he is, and and him telling telling all of us, the readers, and you know everyone else, like he's not some special dude. You know, he just <laughs> you know, like none of us are, right? We just if we just decide to do it, then we'll be great in our own right, right? We'll be awesome in our own way because we're all we're already given everything that we need you know we're one in one we're one in a trillion like we're, we're already here so we're already winners right right this is how we're going to tap into that potential um but before we kind of uh close out i want to make sure jerome asked uh, another question he said okay. uh what let's see where was it i just I had it uh what fascinates you most about fear? Oh, man, good question. I think what fascinates me most about fear is the onset of how fear enters our decision-making process. You know, um, I've been practicing mindfulness for, a, for a quite, a, quite a long time, right? And I know by a by, by, uh, in the, in our biology, right? We had this like fight or flight uh, reaction. Um, and then when fear hits, right, it's thoughts that create our emotions to react. And then it's either we stress and have fear and then react irrationally or rationally or logically. I think um, a lot of people have this misconception that because fear is present, we aren't able to react in a very thoughtful, logical way, right? Right. Fear is present because it's just giving you a signal. Like, hey, something's up. Like, now what are you gonna do? Most people, we react out of emotion, anger, frustration, you know, like get scared, inaction, whatever it is, right? 
we don't take time to like, okay, stick, take a step back or take a breath and be like, something's present. What am I going to do with this thing, right? Or the, with this stress or with this whatever situation that I'm put in, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot more people need to be more aware that that's possible, you know, that you don't have to, uh, you know, create all these neg this negative energy when the fear is present, right? And I'm like, every time I talk to someone and like, I, I can already tell even in the conversation how they're thinking because of the fear that's coming up and then all these emotions start coming up and the energy shifts, right? And I'll, and I'll ask them questions like, you know, in a worst case scenario, what, what, what would happen, right? And then when they answer it, it's like, and I'll tell them like, that's not too bad, you know, like, it, it, it'll be okay right you have all these things uh, to fall back on like it's not that bad you know like most time it's not life or death situations right it's just like a oh i just have to tweak something and everything will be okay i mean it won't be great but it'll be okay right so yeah. um that that's what's that's what fascinates me like how we think about fear right and how we react to fear and 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 that um I want to educate a lot more people that, you know, it, it shouldn't be something that we could, uh, that we should, uh, you know, um, be debilitated by. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm really glad that, that you, um, that you, you went into, uh, like that it's, it's okay. Like it's yeah, going to be okay. okay. Yeah. Because the, the one thing that, um, uh, we covered fear a lot, like in AA, right. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of times, just like you said, when, when a lot of people feel fear, we react. We right. don't, we don't, um, we don't like make a calculated yeah. uh, judgment. We just we react emotionally. And mm -hmm. as like as addicts and alcoholics, people that mm -hmm. react um, when they feel fear, they usually go use or drink or right. go yeah. to their to right. So yeah. like, a lot of times, I mean, you probably heard this analogy. Um, uh, not analogy, but what is it called? Acronym. Mm -hmm. uh, but whenever we would uh, say that we're afraid of something, um, we just we used to always repeat this mantra that fear is false evidence appearing Appear real. real. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, and that, that's all it is. It's it's some it's a BS story in your head about what you yeah. think is gonna happen after this, and it's not happening yet. Yeah. And it, or it's just not happening. Period. Right. So. Yep. Um, take a breath, look around at your immediate surroundings, like notice that all is good, mm -hmm. right? You're mm -hmm. sitting outside or standing somewhere, or you're watching this video on your mm -hmm. phone or on your yeah. computer, and maybe yeah. there's a bird chirping in the background, and, and you're <laughs> something. That's what's happening. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah a lot of times. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's um, that's a great way to kind of close it out. Yeah, um, I awesome. I appreciate your time. Appreciate oh, you coming. You. Yeah, man, I'm 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 so uh, grateful to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. It's been an, it's been a pleasure, you know. Like I said, I'm 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 just uh, you know, blessed and honored to to continue to see and witness, you know, your transformation and all the things that you're doing. So keep up the good work, man. I'm, it's 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 awesome. It's very very awesome, and you're an awesome dude. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, and thanks everybody for you know joining and you know commenting. I see I see all the comments on the side. I just know who it, I just don't know who it is, but thank you for your time. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Jerome. Jerome yeah. is on. Awesome. Oh, okay, Jerome. Yeah, Jerome, yeah. man, my man, my man. Yeah, but we got a few other people. Everybody that I mentioned um, earlier, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah, thank you for coming on, man. It's a pleasure connecting with you and to have you on. And um, I look forward to uh, going live in your group. Yeah, you, yeah. Because the more you talked about it, I'm like, that actually sounds really cool. I didn't know all the details. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so yeah, any, anytime, man. You feel free to you know hop in and take the challenge if you want. Um, when the ebook comes out, you can take the seven day shorter one. You know, well, up to you. But uh, I'd love to see you take the challenge and see how it is i'm but you're 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 on your way already so you're already like creating your movement and you know doing what you what you uh feel is your purpose and it's it's just an amazing journey so far and uh you're just gonna be successful i just i just i don't know like when, when i meet when i when i connect with people now and i see you know um 
and I and I see and connect with them a lot deeper. It's like I get these visions of like, man, this guy is gonna be something great. You know, like I just have this feeling, like this innate feeling. It's weird. I get it with Jerome too, and I tell him all the time. I'm like, man, you you should be doing you know something fantastic. You know, I know, I just feel it. Something something big is gonna happen in the future for you. And I feel the same way about you. So just wanna let you know that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, man, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the love and you coming on. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. And Jerome, with the comments and everybody else watching. I appreciate yes, every one of you. Yeah. Awesome. Hope the walking awesome. Ron Carter. <laughs> <laughs> down, right? I took yeah, down. yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> all, right, all right, man. Thank you so much. Peace.